Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you'd like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below and there you will find a link to my Ravelry page where you can browse the patterns I have available for you to buy and maybe get one for yourself to knit up. Also in the description below, you will find a link to the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook group where we'd love to have you come over and join so we can continue the conversations that we start here on the YouTube YouTube channel. As always, I love chatting with people in the comments and if you want to comment there, but Facebook also gives us the added bonus of being able to share pictures. So that's a plus. Wherever you want to interact, that's great with me. Today, it's almost the end of November and I had told myself that with my Ask Me Anything Knitting Edition, I would try to wait until I had five postcards I did this and I could see it was out of the screen. Five postcards. Um, and that is how I would decide if it was time to do another AMA. What is an AMA? It's Ask Me Anything. And this is my knitting edition. And what I request is that if you would like to ask me a question to have me answer here on this video, is that you send me a postcard. <laughs> because who doesn't like getting mail? And there's something just wonderful about getting a postcard and putting a pen to paper and writing it down. And also I get to see where y'all are from. It is super cool. So I actually went just today and I have six. So I'm super excited and I'm gonna do my best to get through these and answer y'all's questions. If you would like to send me in a question, please check in the description below and you will see my post office office box number and I might even put it up on the screen and I'd love for y'all to send me a question and preferably knitting related but I, I'm pretty flexible on it if you want to ask me about the beach. <laughs> there is beach. So okay this first one I have it's not in English. Gruß aus Braunschweig. Uh, Stad Heinrich des Lohen. Lohen. I don't know. I'm just making it up. There's an, there's like two dots, and so here we go. And this is. I don't know how to pronounce the capital B thing. Schon Gruß I I don't know. I'm guessing it is something Germany related, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. It says Deutschland. So Deutschland is Schloss Wirsigen S. <laughs> I hope that any of my viewers in uh, Germany, I believe, or Austria or wherever this is, Deutschland, I think is Germany, are thoroughly enjoying me mangling your language. <laughs> But it's a beautiful card, and it's apparently Braunschweig. Uh, they have a lion. Super cool. And this says, Hello, Barbara. I have moved 13 times up to now, and I can imagine what's happening at your place. I am guessing, yes, you can. Mass chaos. No questions here. I'm happy with your Watch Barbara Knit. Uh, channel just the way it is. Well, thank you very much. I, I think there's always room for improvement, but it's really great to hear that feedback that you are enjoying what I'm doing so far. Uh, greetings from Germany. Woohoo! I got it right. All my best wishes, Amja. And she is Amja M17 on Ravelry. Well, thank you so much, Amja, for sending me a postcard and saying hi. Um, I love even though there's not a question here, it just makes me feel like there's really a person on the other side of this video camera. And I love talking to y'all. So thank you very much. I really like it when it says uh, Par Avon is super cool. Airmail for me. It makes me feel like I'm some in like World War II or something. <laughs> Doing something cool because it's Par Avon. So thank you very much, Amja. And I'm guessing I'm probably doing my best to pronounce your name. Now we have Blackpool. And if I am uh, in any way correct, I believe Blackpool is in the United Kingdom. And this says, by airmail, Paravon Royal Mail. So Lancashire South. So yes, I'm pretty sure it's United Kingdom. 
So super cool. They have something that looks sort of like the Eiffel Tower, but I'm guessing more British. Uh, <laughs> but it looks super cool. I love the color here and price busters. That's what it says down here. Price busters. Super cool. Dear Barbara, if you were only allowed to keep one pattern, which one would it be and why? Best wishes, Elizabeth. I think this is a sneaky way to ask me what my favorite pattern is again. <laughs> sneaky people. Oh, P.S. This is a picture of Blackpool Tower opened in May of 1894 and is 518 feet tall. It was inspired by the Eiffel Tower. Oh, score! <laughs> what is it? Go! I guessed it. It does. It looks like the Eiffel Tower, doesn't it? That is super cool. Somebody should probably count the number of times I say super cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for sending me this question, Elizabeth. And I read this when I got the uh, postcard and I've been thinking about it and I couldn't decide if you meant any pattern, like it could be somebody else's pattern or specifically my patterns. Um, and I am going to assume that you meant if I had to take all but one of my patterns out of my pattern store on Ravelry, what pattern would I want to keep in there? And I've thought about it and it would be Golden Lion Throne. I'm going to put a picture up of this. Um, it is a two color mosaic lace shawl. And you asked, why do I choose this one? And the reason is because it is the very first piece I designed where I started exploring and coming up with the idea of combining slip stitch mosaic co color work with lace. Um, what it was is I wanted color work lace because I love the look of color work, but it's very heavy. And I also love lace and I like things that are drapey and floopy and things like that. And I wanted to achieve a specific look. And I was like, okay, I need color work in my lace. And I couldn't find any way to do what I wanted it to do. And so I had to make it up myself. And I figured out that combining color work with lace was possible if you used these slip stitches and it started me down <laughs> this merry road and ended up with me writing a book about it and it's just crazy and my love affair with mosaic style uh color work has not stopped but golden lion throne for me i feel is um it's a turning point i guess it it feels just it's very important to me it um i think expresses who I am as a designer. Um, I think I have evolved since then. I've done lots of other stuff and I'm not saying it's the best pattern I ever designed because it does have its limitations because it can't really be adjusted size wise, but it represents a, a big turning point. So the answer is if I had to get rid of all the patterns in my um, Ravelry shop except for one and the one I would keep would be Golden Lion Throne. So thank you, Elizabeth, for this question and showing me that there's an Eiffel Tower somewhere in Blackpool. <laughs> it's super cool. Okay. Fun facts. <laughs> I thought that was fun. Fun facts. Fun facts. The flexible flyer sled was first introduced in the late 1800s in New Jersey and quickly became popular. In 1915, a record 120,000 flexible flyers were sold. The prices ranged from $250 to $12 per sled. I'm curious what a $12 sled was. That had to be like bells and whistles and horns and all kinds of craziness. So, I... This is our second from New Jersey, which I think is super cool. Uh, sea Caucus, New Jersey. And now we know that sledding is very popular and that sleds were invented in New Jersey. New Jersey seems like a pretty happening state. Okay. Hi, Barbara. I was wondering what other crafts interest you if you have time for any. Love your videos. Merry Chris, Sea Caucus, New Jersey. Well, thank you for sending me this lovely postcard. Merry Chris. Um, okay, let's, let's answer this in the inverted order. No. 
I don't have time for any other crafts. Do I wish I had time for other crafts? Most, most definitely I do. And am I fascinated by other crafts? Yes. Do I have time for them? Not so much, especially not since moving. Hopefully as I get things settled down and get settled into my new home, um, I will. My uh, only hobby recently has been unpacking boxes <laughs> and cutting them apart with a giant carpet knife. Um, but I really, I started at the beginning of last year, I think it was. I tried to do the hundred day, the um, one year of stitches where you did embroidery every day and I got a few months into it and I was really enjoying embroidery and I want to pick embroidery back up. I keep thinking of things to do. I, I really enjoy embroidery. I love looking at embroidery stuff and there's some really amazing things being done in embroidery. Um, I have a few video. If you go back a couple of years, there's some videos uh, on Watch Barbara Knit of embroidery. Um, I am fascinated by weaving. I have a couple little tiny pin looms and I have one video on me trying to figure out how to use a pin loom and some other small looms. I actually recently bought a floor loom, not, um, no, not a floor loom. I don't even know what it's actually called. It's like a frame um, for weaving, but it's not like one of those floor looms where they're like chunka chunka and like all moving around and everything. Um, it's I think it's a rigid heddle loom. I'm not 100% sure you can tell. I have no idea. I went to an estate sale and I bought this thing and it's in the garage. Uh, and it takes up a lot of floor space when, when I'm going to set it up, but I want to learn how to use it. So I'm really fascinated by weaving. Um, I have a sewing machine and I have a small collection of fat quarters. Uh, my understanding is collecting fat quarters for quilters is what a yarn stash is for uh, knitters and crocheters. Um, I don't like sewing. I tried to like sewing. It, it, it frustrates me mostly. I wish I could get into it because there are lots of cute things I would like to make. Um, I've tried my hand at pottery, was absolutely horrible at it. I can now greatly appreciate pottery. I, I like all the crafts, you know? I want to do it all. But again, it's time and focus. Um, and sometimes I feel guilty trying to do these other things that I'm taking this time away from my work. So you, you have to find a balance. Um, I also would like to, I know how to crochet, but not very well. I would like to crochet more. Um, and again, it's a matter of how much handwork time do I have? But you can expect to see more embroidery in the future. Um, I was going to show you a couple of my pieces of my embroidery, but my mom stole my embroidery box because apparently she's doing something for Christmas. I don't know. I have like a, um, an old like vintage suitcase with all my embroidery stuff in it and she took it. Um, I guess that serves me right for having something with a handle. <laughs> so Yes, there are all other crafts that interest me. Um, I was actually watching YouTube videos on how to do resin art. So I get easily, easily distracted. They all interest me. Uh, taking that next step to actually doing any of it, um, I just need to find the time. So Mary Chris, thank you for that fantastic question and my fun facts. And um, I hope I answered your question. Okay, now we have do do do. Nova Scotia. Very, very conveniently, it has a you are here. <laughs> so that tells me where it is. Look, that's cool. See, there's like a, a, a star shaped thing and a lighthouse. I got lighthouses last time and a cool sailing vessel. So this is a very interesting thing. This is Nova Scotia. Um, apparently, okay, so so starting here, we've got Halifax, Halifax, Lunenburg, Peggy's Cove, uh, the Cabot Trail, and the Blue Nose. Two. Okay, I did it totally backwards. Um, so this is Halifax. This is Lunenburg. This is Peggy's. This is Peggy's Cove. This is. You know what? Yeah, this is the Cabot Trail, Cape Breton, and this is the Blue Nose, too. Okay, so <laughs> finally got that. Hello. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you for your podcast. Very enjoyable. You're welcome. Thank you for thanking me. <laughs> 
Second, absolutely love your patterns. Well written, easy to follow. Yay, that is my goal. I, my goal for my patterns is I want them to make sense and be easy to follow and also to make you something pretty that you enjoy making it. Um, I've been a knitter for 40 plus years and find you very kind in your how-to videos. I'm glad you like them but wish you could move back camera slightly, bit too close, up sometimes it blows out the picture. You are correct, it does. I am still working on trying to find that. In my old um, house that I lived in, my office and my studio was in the basement, so I had complete control. I had big lights set up and a table, and I had a lot more control over my lighting and my situation, and I'm still working through figuring out how to make the tutorial videos work here in my new home. Um, I tried to go out into my, out that door. There's a door right there. Um, anytime I go out that door, all you hear is parakeets <laughs> because of my birds. Um, and there's a lot of light in here. So constantly I'm fighting the light and trying to find how to get it work. But yes, you're right. I do need to work on it and hopefully I can continue to improve and get, I, I need to hit a happy medium. Sometimes it's too close up, sometimes it's too far away. Um, but I'm gonna try, okay? I'm, I'm sorry. Um, now for the third thing, lol. <laughs> Do you have a favorite fiber to knit with in sock weight or other weights? Wishing you and all and yours all the best in your new home. Kat Montgomery, thank you so much, Kat, for sending me this from Canada. Super, ooh, and look, it looks, this almost looks like Florida. I don't know where it is, but it looks like Florida. More part of on. Um, the Catmont or the Catmont on Instagram, Ravelry, you're all over the place, just like me. Okay, um, favorite fiber to knit with in sock weight. All of them? <laughs> It's hard to have a favorite because different ones do different things and different have other application. I am a 100% um, a sucker for anything with silk in it. I, I love anything with silk in it. I don't necessarily like 100% silk because it's really hard on the hands and it doesn't have a lot of stretch, but anything with silk as in the blend, I really like it for shawls because of the beautiful drape. Um, and so a lot of my sock yarn trails, but 100% wool also can work very beautifully. I love Blueface Leicester, which is a different type of wool. It comes from a different type of sheep. It's not quite as soft as Merino, but it has this depth and luster to it that I just, I really, really like. Um, but I've had some like, I like blends. I think, I mean, I like 100% wool. Um, but a lot of times I like blends. I've worked with a Merino Yak Silk blend, um, uh, a Merino Silk Cashmere blend. I mean, yay, cashmere. So I can't say that there's a specific type of yarn I like to work with the most, but I do, I do, I'm a sucker for anything with silk in the mix. Uh, alpaca in silk, and <laughs> I just really love them. Um, I can't tell you what I like for making socks because I don't like making socks. <laughs> But for shawls, silk, something that has beautiful drape, something that holds the block well, um, I just, I do like that. Um, in other ways, I like yarn. I, I, it, all, it all depends on what I'm doing with it. And um, you might have noticed with the videos I make, I like exploring other things. Um, I love working with, I, I've, there's a, I've worked with some cotton silk blends that are amazing. I haven't had a whole lot of experience with linen again, cause it's tough on the hands, but it does amazing things. Um, but yeah, silk, silk in the, in the fiber mix is how to get me to pick it up. And, um, I do have a friend that said I have an alpaca radar that anytime I go into a store, I pick up yarn and then I'm like, Ooh, I love this one. And invariably it has alpaca in it. So, um, I don't know if I <laughs> answered your question very well. Um, mostly the best answer I can give you is anything with silk in it, but not necessarily a hundred percent silk. So cat, Thank you so much for sending me Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. I just saw that on top. This awesome, and I love the sailing ship. I'm going to sailing tomorrow. Okay.
Now we have this is the gray whale migration, Pacific Rim, Vancouver Island. Another Canadian, I believe, says you, you, U-C-L-U, L-E-T, Euclid, British Columbia. So this is upside down, <laughs> a whale tail, very cool. Hi, Barbara. I first saw one of your videos because of the Indie Design gift along last year. If you saw my most recent video, it's going on again. You came across so warm and friendly on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you. I, you know what? I just try to talk to the camera like I talk to other people. I recently tried making a knitting video and not only was it techn technically challenging, I was so uncomfortable and awkward on camera. So even more of your appreciative of your ease on video now. Um, thank you. I do have, um, I guess maybe a little bit of a confession to make. I spent a lot of time during high school and college doing theater. So I think that having experience in theater gave me a little bit of a, a more of an inclination to be okay with this youtube -y kind of thing. I don't have any like video or TV experience, but when you're on stage and you're talking to a mass of people, it's kind of a similar thing. So uh, that comfort level and experience is probably something that um, helped me. And so, you know, if you can get in any of that, it might help you. <laughs> um, my question, what equipment do you use to film your videos? Editing software, thanks. Wow, that's a giant question. Let's read the instructions here. Each spring, around 20,000 gray whales passing the western shore of Vancouver Island, British Columbia, en route to their summer feeding grounds in the Bering Sea and Chukchi Sea, about 200 resident gray whales will stay and feed along the west coast of Vancouver Island. I didn't know any of that, and that is really interesting to know. I love whales. Um, what equipment do I use to film? To film, I predominantly use my webcam, which is a Logitech, I'm looking at it right now, a Logitech HD 1080p, um, it's a high definition recorder. It is a couple years old. I will probably be upgrading it soon, but the Logitech brand is pretty much, um, the best webcam as far as video picture goes. In most of my tutorial videos, I'm using... I'm using my iPhone. Uh, the smartphones are to the point where the video they take is great. Uh, and there's no, uh, when I first started, I was using my digital SLR, which was frankly just completely overkill and really tough to deal because it's like gigantic and it weighs like two pounds and trying to get it balanced and everything was tough. That is where you get into in the earlier question about getting the video right. So I use this little, uh, I use this little tripod, but he's not really working anymore because this little ball bearing slips all the time. Um, so I ordered this thing, which is what I thought was going to make my uh, videos, my tutorial videos so much better because it's a wearable rig. And this is the thing you mount your phone to. But I I'm still uh, fussing with it and trying to figure out how to make it and, and get the right because you got to sit and you got to knit out here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of crazy. I'm thinking about actually getting another of these or trying to come up with a way where there's like two of these and because it's a matter of having these but being able to see the phone and see so you make sure you're still inside the window. And yeah, it's way, a lot of stuff you guys don't need to know. But um, so those are two tools I've tried. I'm still looking for the perfect thing uh, sound-wise. I have my fancy blue snowball. It is a great thing. Uh, I started out with a lavalier and this one I like much better. Uh, I'm currently using the debut video capture software. I used to use something else, but it quit working on me. I I've been fighting with this a bit. As far as editing software, I use the Moody Movie Studio Platinum, which I loved, but my system, when we moved here, trying to set it back up, it's not cooperating. So um, it's not working. So now I'm using Moavi Video Editor 14 Plus, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it works. 
I am looking at for Christmas getting a brand new computer. And if I do so, I'm thinking about doing the Adobe suite and seeing how the Adobe video editor works, but I, I don't know. <laughs> So that's a whole lot of technical information. Um, it's just trial and error. I do a lot of Googling of what's the best YouTube camera or what's the YouTube editing software. And it makes a huge difference um, whether you are on a PC or an Apple because the the, per, the software is different for those two. Um, <laughs> I, I hopefully, Faye, this was a little bit of helpfulness. Um, I, 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 technology is not my strong suit, um, but I'm trying. But that was a wonderful question from Faye in uh, BC. BC, did it say BC? <sighs> I can't keep things in my brain for you. Yes, BC, Vancouver Island can see the pretty whales. Thank you. Oh, and this is getting to be a long video. I hope y'all are still watching. This is my last one. Uh, this is the Queen Mary 2. Woohoo! Sailing across the sea. So, this person is another person from Long Branch, New Jersey. I need to go to New Jersey, apparently. Very cool. Hi, Barbara. Is it necessary to make a shawl, make a swatch for a shawl or scarf? I love your podcast, Melinda. Melinda. Thank you very much for sending me this cool postcard. Um, I'm not sure, I guess the Queen Mary 2, new, does it leave from New Jersey? I'm curious why you chose this one, but super cool. Um, thank you for writing from New Jersey and essentially writing me a, a <laughs> you could have just written, hi, Barbara, could you just rant for a while? <laughs> yes, that is the easy, yeah, it's necessary. You need to swatch. I have a whole video. I will link to it in the description below and up here on how and why you need to swatch. I ranted about it for about 20 minutes. So um, I will definitely link to that and you can watch it. But yes, you do need to swatch for a shawl or a scarf um, for a variety of reasons. Uh, one is to make sure that you have the same drape. If you want to achieve what the designer achieved, you need to swatch to make sure you get the same gauge. You wanna make sure it's the right size. You wanna make sure that you get the same drape and you don't wanna run out of yarn <laughs> because what your gauge is, it determines your yarn usage, your yardage that you're gonna use. So if you don't have gauge, if your gauge is really, really off, you might not use up as much of the yarn as you intended to and end up with something really small, or you might use up way more than your yarn than you intended to and end up running out and having to buy more yarn or ending up with something that's just not finishable. So the short answer is yes, you do need to make a swatch for a shawl or a scarf. Um, the long answer is watch this video. <laughs> because I have a whole video where I rant about this particular subject. And thank you very much, Melinda, for giving me the opportunity to reiterate this because this is actually one of my uh, personal favorite soapboxes. So, as I said, the video has gotten much longer than I normally do, but it is us chatting maybe... Um, let me know. Maybe we need to stick with a smaller number of uh, postcards per video or if you can handle me for this long. Thank y'all all so much. Thank you to Melinda and Faye and Amja and Elizabeth and Mary Chris and Kat for sending me awesome postcards and asking me questions. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be updated whenever I upload a new video to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.